Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Lockdown with Max. Today's guest is the fantastic Caroline Barker. Caroline is a sports journalist and reporter who works in television and radio. She currently presents mainly for the BBC, Sky Sports, the Totally Football Show, the Non-League Show and Premier League Productions. Caroline, you seem very busy. Are you busy at the moment during lockdown? Can I point out that's why I'm number two? I was due to be number one, wasn't I, Max? Caroline, you were, but we of course got Michelle in and now we've got you. It's great oh. to have you. I would happily be Michelle's number two any oh, day of the week. Oh, that was that was a yeah. lovely interview and insight into into what she does too. And of course, she loves football leagues. So what's not to like about Michelle? Exactly. What have you been up to during lockdown? Are you still busy working or? Yeah, we got in the first week that it, it was announced, Sky actually were, were quite ahead of the game in, in making sure and the BBC and just making sure that everyone was at home and safe. So we started on the technology from the start. No one had heard of Zoom, had they, like a month or, so ago, or two months ago. But we were on it from the start and we did our, our little netball show that we do for Sky off the court. That was in, in the first week of it. And then since then, it's just grown, really. Everywhere you... I'm not saying we were the first, Max. Clearly, that was you. Clearly, that was you. <laughs> but, but everywhere that you look now, everyone's at, at home, trying to improve their decor in the background, trying to make themselves look intelligent with their bookcases uh, or into football. <laughs> you haven't seen yours? Yeah, exactly. So with my lockdown with Max border, I thought I'd be creative and try and create one. Um, and it, and it made me look a little bit more professional as well, maybe. No, you don't need that, Max. Always the pro, always the pro. But yeah, it's impressive. I might have to get myself one of those next. Obviously yeah. not with lockdown with Max. Yeah. That might look a bit odd. Right. A bit right. odd. Yeah. Um, I thought we could discuss the impact of on football and the whole coronavirus and situ situation. I think you were one of the last people I interviewed, Caroline, actually pitched side. It was the Forest Millwall game. Was that the last game you attended or did you attend another one that weekend before it all kind of went behind closed? Well, the season was postponed I actually got on the train to go to Fulham Brentford that was going to be the Friday night the very last game I was going to and I like I like to get to a ground you know about three days early so I was up there having a spot of lunch and uh, was due to meet actually a couple of, of Brentford fans we were going to talk about uh, Griffin Park and the closure of that even though it was at, at Fulham we'd already obviously had indications that things were going to start to lock down so that was the Friday and then that game was postponed. So I actually got I got within touching distance of being a, a game on, on the Friday night. But yeah, the one with you at Nottingham Forest was was the week before. And I think it just we'd sensed it then, hadn't we? And clearly Nottingham Forest became a bit of the, the centre, the focus yeah. right at the start. What do you think will happen with football then? You know, there was talk this morning about that if it was even if it was played behind closed doors, people would still have large gatherings to watch the games, you know. I was speaking to Michelle about this, for teams that might, you know, miss out on going to Wembley and having that experience, there's things like the playoff final for the FA Cup final. How can you see it being resolved? Do you think it will have to wait until, you know, we're all allowed back in the stadium? Do you think they'll, it will, do you think it will go behind closed doors or possibly the season called void? I'm, I'm in a bit of a privileged position in that I'm a fan, first and foremost, of football, right? So we're all sat there going, oh, we're missing it. But clearly... We can, we can and we will and we will continue to talk about the fact the bigger picture and what actually really matters is keeping people safe. Of course, parking just my, my fan side for a moment. I'm also involved as an independent director on the board at the National League. So I'm seeing firsthand the the struggles that clubs in lower level football are going through financially just to keep going. And I had a, um, a really good chat with Ben Robinson um, from Burton Albion yesterday and we had a long chat about just what you can do what's the expectation but first and foremost these football clubs that we love are rooted in the community you're missing it because you're missing it because of your mate that you sit alongside but you're yeah. also missing the fact that that daily contact all this great work that goes on particularly at lower level football clubs that we don't always talk about and I think there's a real sense that we've got to protect we've got to come out the other side of this uh, as healthy as we possibly can by football I mean in that term and and of course yeah clearly with society we in the best possible shape that we can but with football we've got to have these clubs still existing we can't have berries we can't have clubs going under so what can we do to make sure to wrap our arms around such these these focal points for all of us it's about mental health it's about physical health it's about actually just 
going to watch and be part of the thing that we we love doing and and have often taken for granted so it's it's really difficult seeing both sides of it seeing clubs struggle seeing people make difficult decisions about laying staff off Um, and these are decisions made by different individuals throughout society at the moment but but oh gosh we've we've got to protect them max because you love your club can you imagine if you woke up tomorrow and and your club was having to reform was no more and i think that like you said the damaging impact it has on not only clubs but just general people because people go to football as a get away from other issues and you know it's it's people's weekends and you know even though like you said you know keeping people safe i think that everybody just wants it back and i think that even michelle said that we can't call the season void but playing it behind closed doors would still be a better option do you think that would be a better option to play it behind closed doors oh it's split down the middle isn't it it is split because the financial impact of that and then you've got to look at why why do we want to complete the season well for integrity right because we want to maintain promotion and relegation if the premier league go and complete and then the efl doesn't then what happens to the relegation places from the premier league who do you decide goes up from from the efl so we have to look at both ends of it when you look at the um pyramid system below the national league they've already decided they've gone with the the null and void if sadly we do see clubs go kaput go bust They'll rebuild, hopefully, thankfully, thanks to us as fans. But then are we going to have spaces in the league? Are we going to have to have a jigsaw effect anyway and bring other clubs in? And it's very similar to the National League and, and League Two in that respect. I think the EFL have been quite vocal about the fact, actually, if they can't complete the season, then they might not have two up from the National League. So where does that leave it? We have to try and protect the thing that's beautiful about the game in our country, which is the pyramid, isn't it? It's as much as we love clubs in the Premier League, we love clubs in the Ishmian League. It's about all those levels of the game, playing on a Sunday as well as a Saturday that we've got to try and safeguard somehow. How you work it out, Max, I don't know, because people are going to fall either side of it. But what you have to do is be clear in what you're doing, communicate what you're doing, but show that actually you are listening to all sides of the debate. That's a really tough thing to do. It's just such strange times and fingers crossed that football will return. Um, Caroline, I'm asking this question a lot to people when I get them on lockdown with Max. The question I'm going to ask you is how you actually started to become a football reporter, journalist, presenter. How did it all start for you? If you can kind of take me back to the, take me back to the beginning. When you weren't born, Max, is that what you're saying? Pretty much then, yeah, okay. (laughs) You normally get a dig into me. I'm going to get a dig into you early. You're right. You're all right. Uh, so I've always loved from the very first moment, actually, I think a week after my mum was very ill when I was born. So a week or so later, my dad was on babysitting duty. And I think I was taken down to watch Chelmsford City to New, New Rittle Street, which is right next to if anyone knows Chelmsford. The old beautiful ground was right next to the cricket ground so the home of of Essex and I was taken down there and strapped in my whatever I would have been strapped in as a a baby and and watched football from that very first moment so I've always loved it and as it's gone on my family are very much part of the the fabric of Chelmsford City so my dad used to be the key holder and and we'd go and open up the the ground on a Saturday morning I'd cycle down behind him he'd sit me up on the bar pour me a lemonade Uh, we'd pay for it we put it in the pot and then I'd go out and I'd dust it had a lovely old wooden stand at New Ritual Street and I'd dust every seat that was to keep me occupied while my dad opened up the rest of the ground and so from that very first moment it gets in your bones it is like I said that point that you're missing about your mates that are down there those that pass around the sweets that you talk to the ones that you know are going to moan even though you're four nil up all those characters that you love and become part of your your history and the fabric of you I remember spending a Uh, a birthday in the back of a car coming back from uh, the club that was known as Gravesend now, Ebbsfleet United, because the tunnel had shut. And you remember all these different points that have become markers in your your life, and that's because you're a football club. So when I started talking, I never stopped talking, I think, from that. I'm the last of six, so you have to make yourself heard, right? And and carrying on talking, it just became a natural progression. I volunteered at, at my local radio station, BBC Essex, at the time, I was kind of a bit split over what I'd do because I loved uh, writing plays 
and I, I thought I might become a, a writer. So I went off to university to study English and at the end of that I was offered either to go um, through the BBC route, they would pay for me essentially to go through and do my journalism qualification or to go to Central St Martins and, and study dramaturgy which is kind of the, the, the writing aspect, the producing aspect and doing everything to do with being a, a playwright. So I was a bit torn but I loved what I was doing and I'd been volunteering, answering the phones, doing a bit more, getting out and reporting uh, and, and talking a lot about Chelmsford City. So I decided to go the, the journalism route and uh, it was kind of a convoluted way that I got through from there. I was a news journalist, first of all, did uh, early morning reports. I'd be at five o'clock in the morning out in Clacton trying to get the mobile mast up on the top of the car to do a report on the new mayor being announced or something like that and BBC London actually I started doing some shifts with them uh, in sport and Pete Stevens who's still the sports editor and said to me do you love your football I said yeah I love my football can I can I just come and do anything on it and I think the first game I actually went to report on was was a, a Crystal Palace game I was actually freelance at the time um, and I've been freelance ever since. I had one year of staff at, at the BBC just so I could uh, try and get a bit more of respectability to my life but I've yep. been freelance ever since from that point and, and I've just dotted around. I've got to go to everything. It's like being a kid in a sweet shop. Uh, of all the, the brilliant sports events that you'd love to go to and ultimately just talk about stories and, and be the ultimate fan which is what it's allowed me to be. Everyone's dream job is to talk about football and you know there's a lot of people that talk about football for a living you must enjoy that. You mentioned there also about freelance and actually working do you prefer freelance then because you get to do lots more things? I have to say that I've enjoyed being freelance but but Max for the new season all that is about to change. Uh, I can't tell you what's going to happen uh, but yeah I've signed on a dotted line um, I'm, I'm moving away from from that freelance life. However, the job that I'm going to be going to do, that was mm. probably in English there for you, uh, the job that I'm going to do <laughs> will actually involve a lot of variety. So I will still get that. The, the thing about freelance life is you get to see so many different aspects of, of sport, of the world, and you get to talk to so many different people from, from those that you work with, the brilliant people that help put shows together that do the camera work. I've only been doing TV a relatively short time, but from radio as well, there are so many creative people. And I just love a good talk. I love a good talk. So they probably get bored of me. So that's where freelance was good because they could just move me on to someone else so that they could get bored of my chat. <laughs> Caroline, I first met you when um, Colin and yourself invited me down to the Channel 5 studios, Chris and all the team there. That was such a fantastic day. I'll always be grateful for that. You know, I was just, it was just such a brilliant day to see how it all worked behind the scenes. And it was so good to interview you, Colin and Chris and everybody. When I watched you live kind of report near the screen when you were at Channel 5 doing the football show, what was your style, Caroline? Because you seem like you kind of get that um, football fan personality across when you're presenting. Anyone that sees me now knows I've got no style, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. I, I, you just got to talk to the great Jonathan Pierce. Um, mm -hmm. I've had lots of of wonderful people been willing to to talk to me over the years about what they do. And Jonathan told me Martin Tyler. I'm not going to name drop it. <laughs> keep name dropping. Um, it's it's knowing that I'm talking to you, Max. I'm talking to my family. I'm talking to someone like me. I think it's. <sighs> Sometimes you can try and throw too much knowledge in or try and not be yourself. And that's when you get you get tripped up, isn't it? I think you just you just got to, you just got to enjoy it. First and yep. foremost, you've got to enjoy it. And, and ultimately, I, I don't know if I have a style or not, but I, I always kind of figure and maybe this will change now that I've signed a contract for someone. But I, I always figure, you know, if, if it doesn't work out, then I'll go and try something else. And we are so fortunate. Look at you. You got up, didn't you? You came down to Channel 5, you said you're going to go and do it, and you went and did it. And that was uh, showing that actually, just get up and do it, just go and have a go. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But ultimately, you've got to enjoy it, and you've got to do it the way that makes you happy. Because I say, you'll, you'll get found out if you're not being yourself. 
Exactly. And I think that's when I'm doing my YouTube stuff and I'm interviewing people at you pitch side, you know, that that's a hobby for me. And I always said and I've always said to people that it's probably the same for you. If you can kind of turn a hobby of talking and loving football into a job, then I think you're going to wake up every day and be really happy. And like you said, you'll come across that way and not get found out that you're being fake, maybe, or you're not kind of coming across with your own personality. Ultimately, you've got to enjoy it. That's all any of us can do. And we are so lucky. There are always going to be moments uh, I've I've stood with certain people that, that on the team at, at big events and we've been doing, I don't know, four or five days straight doing 19 hour days. And there's a point when everyone goes, oh, it's a little bit tiring uh, and we have to do that thing. And I try and do it every time I walk into one of the buildings we get to, to work at, uh, one of the football grounds we get to go to. You try and take that moment to walk in, just stick your shoulders back and have a deep breath and think, oh my goodness, look where I'm stood today, look who I'm getting to meet, look at the interesting people I'm getting to talk to. And particularly when you see the real tough stuff that, that people are having to do at the moment. And we are so lucky, we are mm. so lucky. But I would also say anyone can now have that opportunity. Forgive me for not knowing, Max, but before you walked into Channel 5, before you started the match day with Max, that was just you and, and your wonderful dad. That was you saying, I would just give it a go. Yeah. And everyone's now got broadcasting equipment. They've always got something that, that you can broadcast on and it's free. Twitter mm. is, is free. YouTube is is free. The ability to broadcast now. Yeah, you've got to have a bit of money to get the, the phone in the first place, of course. And, and I'm not saying that it's always easy, but we have got the ability to talk to so many people. But the main, main thing is that you talk from a position of authority. I love football. I've always loved football. What's kind of going to be your thing? You started with a thing you love, which is Nottingham Forest, right? Yeah. And that comes yeah. across. And that comes across. So that's that's the other key thing, I think. Uh, yeah, and I think that because when I started with Forest, and like you just said, it's something that you love, you know, you, you can get that personality across. And for me, I know that I'll probably want to move on to doing other things, like doing other clubs and kind of covering the whole of whether that's the Premier League, AFL, however it kind of falls with me. Um, you're a women's reporter, Caroline, in a very male-orientated sport in football. Have you ever found any challenges with that? I'm always interested. No, no. Really? I, yeah, I, I honestly, I honestly haven't. I think that being, I mentioned the last of six, I've always grown up with, with boys and I've never really had an issue with anyone saying anything, I think in relation to, to my gender. And, and maybe I am fortunate. And of course, I've heard some, some truly horrible stories that fellow journalists have, have been through. Mm. I don't go looking for it too. I think that's the key as well. Make sure you sort out your filter settings on social media so you don't see it. And and generally, you know in yourself whether you've done something that you thought, oh, what have I done there? And you'll know that and your own, you're your own biggest critic in that respect. So uh, again, when I was I was chief exec at, at Chelmsford for a couple of years and I guess that's where I would have come across anything had I but I didn't didn't experience it in the boardroom I don't experience it on the board at the National League now I, I've not experienced it uh, but within football people may try and belittle you or may try and do things I oh, go over my head but I don't know whether it's a gender thing or or just just generally I, I am doing something I love doing and I think very fortunate but it's great to have a i've got a huge support network around me those that have helped me along the way and and you'll find this too i hope max that's that's the real important thing is that that there are people you're going to meet along the way that will become firm friends but also if you can help anyone out on that basis too and and i know that i can pick up the phone and talk to them for information advice one of, one of my big mentors coming through was Eric Samuelson from AFC Wimbledon. I never know what title to give him because he did a bit of everything from being chief exec to a uh, car park attendant. To, uh, he's now focusing on, on, on the new ground. And when I was first involved at, at Chelmsford, we didn't have any contracts for players or managers, which you don't always 
need but there was a kind of a, a demand for it and I was presented with one by an agent a football agent at the time we were in the Ishmin League and you get one of these and I went straight to Eric and said right what's how does your structure work I don't want to see clearly he's not going to tell me such and such gets paid x y and z but he helped me with with structuring a, a football club and he's just one of those along the way who've always been willing to pick up the phone they might put it down straight after like you're about to do to me Max but yeah, <laughs> yeah. they pick it uh, up in the first place when you work with people like Colin Murray and Chris Iwellamo, when, when was the first time you worked with Colin Murray? Had you known him before the Channel 5 show? Colin I worked with on 5 Live. I was on Fighting Talk a, a little bit yeah. with him. Um, and I think we'd, we just instantly hit it off. He's got an amazing brain and you have to... You have to play hopscotch going on the journey with him. You know, you got you got to try and flit around with him, and and I I find that um, in anyone attractive. You know, that's a quality that you want to be friends with, because you want to you want to f- not know where you're going next. And I always find that with Colin. So working with him on on Five Live, and he he has completely won this lockdown if you listen to any of his shows that he's doing on Five Live at the moment, he's doing a virtual pub on a, at ten o'clock at night, yeah. and he's 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 really one of those characters and one of those people that you feel like he's opening the door to you anyway he's letting you in a little sneak peek on his conversation with chris just met him on on channel five but again you can see you can always tell when someone is going to be a great talker and first and foremost it comes back to that that point he knows what he's talking about and if you've got that that knowledge base to start with Mm. And everything else the nerves should just go out the way and uh, it comes comes across as confident and yeah but both incredibly likable human beings and that's the most important thing colin's crazy isn't he he's just so mad isn't he many a time i have been in <laughs> a many a time in a makeup room with colin murray and he he chooses the the songs that he puts on that you get your hair and makeup done to. Yeah. So I think it depends, you know, what you're going to walk out looking like, depending on what tune he's put on in there. And he yeah, he makes everyone feel part of it. And I think that's that's the key really, mm-hmm. is that actually we're all yeah. He might be fronting it, but he's no more important than than the person doing X, Y, and Z. It's very much that that collective that gets everything on air. You talked about the netball and doing the netball show earlier on Zoom and everything. How did you get into netball then, Caroline? Because I've never really spoken to you actually about Have you seen that. the height of me, Max? Have you seen how tall I am? I'm a well, natural for netball. Well, 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 I always think that you are quite tall when I'm interviewing you because for me, I've, I, I think you even said it when we last spoke. I think I've just shot up recently. So I'm, I'm getting quite tall now instead of being really small and ho- holding the mic like that. So. <laughs> Don't worry, I've spent my life doing that. <laughs> people, that, And that's the only reason I, I got into doing netball is actually I could speak to people and they'd be on my eye level. So that was fine. Uh, yeah, I've, netball, I played it um, coming up as, as a kid and was always interested. When I had seriously, seriously got involved in it with work, not through broadcasting first off, but I used to have a, a digital content company and we we built a website for uh, one of the Super League teams. Uh, a, a mate of mine was involved in it, so one of the Netball Super League teams. And I put that together for them and just went back to, to watching Super League, which I'd missed for a couple of years. And I'd seen it at university and not really got involved. And then just got hooked again. And it's a bit like watching initially with lower league football, you see something taken which is exactly the same, like the... the what what you see, the emotions, getting involved is exactly the same. And then just watching it grow, watching it go from a couple of hundred people to a thousand people to we had 9,000. We had a record crowd the opening day of the, the Netball Super League season this year. The World Cup, the, yeah. foot, the amount of people that went and enjoyed the World Cup when it was in, in Liverpool. And just watching something grow like that has, has been brilliant. These are powerful, athletic, intelligent women excelling at sport and it's so blooming fast and they're amazing athletes and if you've not been to see it live go and see it live because it puts us all to shame yeah i'm sure you could keep up max 
Well, maybe. Um, in fact, I actually might have to get to a netball game sometime. I'd, re- I'd, I'd really like to go to one. Do well, you can come yeah. because uh, Nottingham, where we had the the opening day, there's there's big netball in in Nottingham. Some of the England games as well. So when we're all out of this, when we're not locked down with Max, uh, you can come along. I'll make you come and sit with me in the commentary booth. Caroline, thank you. No, I, I really I really appreciate that. On to some quick questions now to end. Oh dear, it might this be the might, end of me. This might be a difficult one for you to answer because you have maybe had so many or you, you've enjoyed so many. What's the favourite event or TV show or TV series that you've worked on in your media career? Ah, I loved being at the Commonwealth Games final for the netball because you thought, here's a moment when things are going to change. And any of those moments I've absolutely loved. Um, I've been at FA Vars finals, being down on, on the pitch and, and talking to people. But also every year I get to go, I don't think it's... This was a, a a bit of a you know put that loose one in the background to let you know that I went to the Super Bowl this year. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who am I? Um, going to the Super Bowl every year, we get to tell brilliant stories. But what I've loved above anything else, and I'm not just saying this because it it was m- meeting you and recently as well, but actually being part of the football league this past couple of seasons has been immense. It's the very first games I started watching. Um, and commentating on and broadcasting on Room Football League. You said this was quick fire and I've gone on for five hours. I told you this is the problem. All right, it's all right. When I came out from, from my mother's birthing channel, Max, which you don't want to know, it was <laughs> from that very first moment I was talking and I, and I haven't stopped since. I've gone, I've gone on before. And when they ever say do quick fire questions, for me, I sometimes struggle just to wrap my answer up. And I think that's really hard sometimes. No, it's not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, on to the next one, Caroline. This again is probably a difficult one for you to answer. If you didn't support Chelmsford, who would you go support? away? Go away. Forest, maybe Forest. There's, not, there's not another answer to that. Actually, uh, we had Chris Asombolonga. We had Brit's older brother play for us. Yeah. So we've got yeah. a link already, right? Yeah. There you go. He he did all right. Uh, we, you know, we've been a bit yeah, we've been a bit vanilla over the past couple of seasons. Yeah, yeah. Next year is our year, Max. Next year is our year. Sure. sure. <laughs> uh, who's the best person you've ever interviewed, Caroline? Me. Hey, apart from you, Max. <laughs> apart from you. I mean, that's a given. I don't know even why that's part of the question. I once interviewed a guy on death row in California. Oh, who man. had never heard of netball and whilst playing tennis with him interviewing him whilst playing tennis um i explained to him the rules of netball and that was fascinating i won't go into why he was on death row uh, mm. suffice to say he might actually be coming off it so uh, there's there's a little bit thankfully thankfully they're, they're doing some work on on whether he can be be uh, retried at the moment but yeah fascinating guy so you're maybe a bit like Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid when they do it for ITV, when they go in the... Do, do you never, the never liken me to Piers Morgan, Max. Never. <laughs> if only because he's an Arsenal fan, right? Well, well exactly. Um, Caroline, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, stay safe. Everybody remember to follow Caroline. I'm sure you'll see you. I'm sure they'll see you on your t- their TV screen sometime soon when we're all back to normal. Or even now, if you go live on Sky, maybe. I don't think I'm ever back to normal, Max. I think that's the problem. Okay, Caroline, thank you very much. Hello, Max. Lovely to talk to you. Much appreciated. And if you have enjoyed this episode of Lockdown with Max, remember to drop it a like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Stay safe.